Hi and welcome back to another follow-up video of our hybrid water-cooled notebook. The third part so far in the previous video we were testing the internal water cooling loop like the hybrid cooling where we're using our internal small tiny pump to circulate the cooling inside our own uh, water cooling block and few of you noticed that in the original video or in the original condition the notebook was closed but in the second video I kept the notebook open and now we're just going to rerun this test and see what kind of impact it has if we close it, if there is like a performance um, downside or like if it's negatively affecting the performance and temperature. Just going to quickly check a Cinebench run and afterwards we're attaching an external water cooling loop, external radiator, external pump to check what the theoretical maximum performance would be. Seasonic, the heart of your system. I also saw several times that there was a comment regarding the old ASUS notebook which was also apparently water-cooled but I'm showing you a picture you right now where you can see that ASUS was not really water-cooling in the notebook but they had a normal heat pipe cooler sitting inside and at a certain point they just had an additional yeah, copper pipe running across the heat pipe cooler and this way if you attach the external docking station you could water cool the heat pipe cooler which was sitting inside but at the positions where the CPU or the GPU was sitting it was still just a heat pipe cooler and that's why I would personally not consider this a, a real water cooling solution. The cover is in place you can also hear the internal pump running and now we're just going to straight perform a Cinebench R20 multi-run and see what the performance looks like. Our previous run with the cover removed you can see it's still in the list with 3521 points and now yeah it's only 31 12 points which makes absolute sense I mean the cover if the cover is removed it has better airflow on the fence itself and then you're getting a better performance but keeping in mind that the stock performance was somewhere at around 2800 points then it's still a performance increase of about 10 percent and considering that we're yeah removing one fourth of the surface area for cooling because keep in mind right here we have our connection dock sitting inside and originally you also have a fin array right here for air cooling you have one here you have one here and you have your one here and with our water cooling solution we only have three of those fin stacks and the fourth is gone to yeah, fit our quick connect ports inside and considering that we're running 25% less surface area but we still have a performance increase of 10% I still think this is a fairly good result. Just removed the cover again in order to be able to remove the small cable which is connecting our internal pump. I guess for any real world application you would place a switch somewhere or even make like a switch which is like whenever you plug something in here it would disable the pump or whatever kind of solution you would come up with. And I think with our external water cooling loop it should also be safe to just leave it open because we don't rely on the fans anymore. We could even completely disable those fans. It shouldn't make any kind of difference to the performance. But I will just hook up the external cooling now. Uh, that was an oopsie. <laughs> For some reason I thought that those parts are kind of self-sealing uh, but it's this end at the notebook which is yeah, doing the quick disconnect part but yeah, that, that was close. That almost failed. The cooling loop ready to go. We're using a DDC with a 360 radiator. That's just the normal pump uh, reservoir combination and radiator combination I'm always using for my testing. You've probably seen that multiple times in my videos. And now you will see um, those quick connect fittings. Um, we just used them because they were tiny and the easiest we could find. And yeah, if I enable the DDC pump, you will see that the DDC has quite a lot more power than this small baby right here. You could quickly see a real water jet inside the bottom fitting, but it's already gone. But yeah, there should be plenty of water going through. I mean, you can just judge it by the bubbles. Yeah, so flow rate should be absolutely fine. R20 Multi is over performance wise. Interestingly, the same as previously with the just internal hybrid cooler. Again, around 3100 points. And the reason for that should be our power limits right now. The PL2 power target limit is at 107 watt and the PL1 power limit is at 45 watt. If we start a Cinebench run, which I can quickly do, then you can see the power should be, yeah, you can see it right here. It goes up to like 80, 90 watt 
and then after a few seconds this one throttles down to uh, about 45 watt and that is due to the power limit one and now yeah you can see it uh, dropped down to 45 watt but we have a lot of headroom temperature wise you can see it's just hitting yeah 50 degrees celsius basically and now that we're running the water cooler we should be able to increase the peel one power limit from like 45 to i don't know like 65 70 maybe and that should give us a lot of additional performance the first and rough optimization is increasing the pl1 from 45 to 95 watt and also increase the turbo power time window from 28 seconds to 128 seconds and that should give us hopefully the entire run with the higher power limit and the PL2 power limit is at 107 watt. I also gave the CPU a negative offset of 30 millivolt on the core voltage which should give us additional headroom, should run a little bit cooler. CPU package temperature hitting about 90 degrees Celsius, which is okay for a notebook running Cinebench, I guess. And also you can see the power consumption at CPU package power always hitting about 90 watt, which should give us a lot more performance. Just waiting for our 20 single to finish and afterwards we're going to test 3D Mark Time Spy. The original score was 9000 points and after mounting our hybrid cooler it was down to like 5000 points because yeah, the GPU was getting way too warm and I hope that it was just due to the fact that we couldn't dissipate the heat and that we don't have like a contact issue with the block itself. Um, that would be not that great, but we will see if we can match or bypass the original 9000 points in Time Spy because with our hybrid cooler we could only get like 5000 points and that was not great. 4000 points in multi, 475 in a single, absolutely not bad. And now I will try to do some optimizations and see if I can manually tune it, um, do some overclocking in XTU and see what kind of maximum performance we can get out of this thing. Yeah, even with more optimizations and even, yeah, I tried a manual overclock of up to 4.6 gigahertz across all cores, but you can see it's still sitting at about 4 gigahertz at all cores, which is just a typical notebook thing. You can see one core is already hitting 90 degrees Celsius and then that is pretty much the limit, even though the power, yeah, it's a power limit. 4,000 points, not bad, not bad, but yeah. Sadly, can't do much more manual overclocking wise, but because we're still hitting 90 degrees Celsius even with the water cooling block. Overall, I have to say I'm quite satisfied with how this thing turned out and also the performance of it. Considering that we're using an external water cooling loop and you can see the fans are not spinning that fast. It's only, I would guess, something like 800-900 RPM. The performance should be quite nice and I think just this concept itself would be quite cool if some vendors would adopt it. I saw also that some people were concerned regarding the internal pump, but the pump, if I would just plug it in, would still be fine because the, the pump is still part of the loop right now. And if it would be connected, then the water would just also flow through the pump in the same direction because some people were concerned that the pump would run, dry, would run dry, but that is absolutely not the case. Yeah, unfortunately, we're again not exactly at the original temperature. It's better than with the hybrid cooling solution, but we're still missing about 1,300 points back to original and or back to stock. And yeah, it's again a temperature issue. You could see max temperature 86 degrees Celsius while stock was 77 degrees Celsius. The only thing I can think of what could be the cause is maybe a bad contact between the cooling block itself and the GPU. At least that's what I hope. And that also means that I will remove the cooler and reapply paste and this way maybe improve the contact and also improve the temperatures. Otherwise, I'm not sure what I would change, but let's see what the contact looked like. Yep, that was definitely causing our temperature issues. You can see the thermal paste contact, absolutely terrible on the GPU, which could be caused either by bad thermal paste application, which I don't think because the amount on there looks plenty, but I guess the thermal pads were too thick. I'm just going to remove the thermal, pa uh, the thermal pads and replacing them with paste as well. That should give us better results and better contact on the GPU. On the CPU itself it looked okay. You can see the contact on the CPU is looking fine. So I'm just going to fix the GPU part. Done with the new thermal paste application and you can see there is plenty of thermal paste on the GPU. It's much more than what you usually should use. But as you've seen in the prior application, 
yeah, their contact was not great. And in this case, it makes sense to just try to use a little bit more thermal paste to make sure that you 100% will have contact to this surface. And if it's too much, the mounting pressure will regulate that itself. It will just squeeze out all the yeah, additional thermal paste to decide it's going to be fine. It will not have a negative performance impact. It will just squeeze out to the side and then it should be fine. Also, you can see that I applied thermal paste on everything around it, like the memories and also the power stages. And yeah, usually you wouldn't use um, thermal paste on the power stages or on the memories. Mainly it's typically just a cost perspective or cost aspect because pads are much cheaper and they're also more temperature stable over time. On those type of components, you won't have the pump out effect. And that's why usually would you go for pads. But in our case, um, it's more important that we'll, we will have proper contact on the GPU itself. Also fix the CPU. Yeah, added some thermal paste right here. Let's see if this is going to be better. The only thing which just came to my mind is the fact that all those components right here in the area of the power stages are not electrically isolated anymore because we don't have the thermal paste in between the cooler and those components anymore. Usually there is a oxide layer on aluminum which should insulate it but or isolate it, but yeah, can't be 100% sure. We will find out. I hope that we're not going to burn anything. This looks promising, at least no short circuit so far. Finally, we have the result we were looking for 9,600 points versus previously 9,000 points. And that is a performance increase of about 8%. And I think that that is a quite solid performance improvement, especially considering that there is no way we can tweak the GPU. We can't overclock it on those notebooks. We also can't change the power limit. Those mobile GPUs are hard locked. There is no way to really gain anything out of those. And considering the fact that we're hard locked by Nvidia, I think, yeah, 8% is a solid performance improve and yeah it was it was just the thermal paste application on the GPU or maybe the pads around that it didn't have proper contact but now it's looking really really nice and uh, I think I'm also going to rerun Cinebench quickly just to be sure uh, that we had proper contact on the CPU before or if we we're missing anything. After the rerun it's still around 4000 points which means that the CPU was fine before which is also good so I don't have to rerun all the tests. In gaming applications, it can really get exciting. And you can see on the right side, the CPU boosts up to five gigahertz on simultaneously like six or eight cores. And that is absolutely amazing. Obviously with the very high V core of typically 1.46, 1.47, which is the stock V core. And even, I mean, we're even using a 30 millivolt negative offset. We are still hitting about 1.45, 1.46 volt on the core, and that is also resulting in the fairly high temperatures, which you can, which you can see on the left side. Yeah, typically hitting up to 80 or 90 degrees Celsius on some of the cores, but still it's also boosting up to 5 gigahertz on the cores, which equals a fairly decent performance right now, about 100 FPS in average and 57 FPS in 1% low. Yeah very decent performance even for gaming and considering that it's a 9980HK which is not the recent generation anymore that is not even bad. To me personally this project was a huge success. I mean you have to keep in mind that this cooling block is fully made of out of aluminium and not copper. All the typical like stock heat sinks made out of those heat sinks and fin arrays, fin stacks, they're all fully made out of copper. Some are using aluminium fins but still the heat pipes and everything contact area is always made out of copper and right now in this configuration we're only using an aluminium block and it has a worse conductivity and considering this fact I think the performance is quite amazing that we could increase 2D performance by about 30% and 3D performance by I would assume something like 7 or 8% I think that is a, a fairly good uh, result and you have to keep in mind that I mean we cannot we can't really tune the GPU that much because those mobile GPUs from Nvidia they're just hard locked there's nothing we can really do but um, keep that in mind that we're cooling the GPU better than before and due to the fact that it's running colder it's consuming less power and this way it can boost a little bit higher and that's how you can somehow get a few percent more performance out of the GPU itself while we can heavily overclock also the CPU Typically, we can increase the power consumption by 60 or 70 watt, which is definitely a lot for one of those CPUs with eight cores. And yeah, 30% additional performance in 2D and like seven, eight, 9% in 3D, I think. Yeah, 
I'm quite satisfied with those results. And yeah, just let me know what you think about this whole project. And if you want to see more about this 3D metal printed stuff and maybe even about this notebook cooler itself, if you have any ideas, questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments. And otherwise, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye bye.